Gonna go ahead and play next stop, nowhere. <laughs> Got some pretty good music. Back at a local transport is headed to the Earth's moon to deliver a package, but has stopped off at a nearby bar to rest. We're still a little more than 600 million miles from the moon. No, I, I know. But after this, it's probably 50 million miles from another watering hole or anything else, really. Uh-huh. We need a charge, Cody, and I wanted to stretch. Maybe get a drink. Oh, okay. I'll keep an eye on the package. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Lemonade, I know you guys serve them. We're sorry, we can't understand your command. A Lynchburg lemonade, or anything, how, how about a water? Promise I won't ask for ice. Hello, Trampler. Welcome to the Misto Tavern. Would you like a... Uh, forget it, just forget it. Cancel. Hey, how's it going? Uh, it's going. Trying to get a drink, but this Bendix unit's not really cooperating. So, yeah, fair warning. Surprised it still has juice to even run, to be honest. You want a drink? Okay. Maybe, uh, maybe I can help. Maybe you can help. Well, Brigadier, you're welcome to try. Hello, Traveler. Welcome to the Misto Tavern. Would you like a drink? Good luck. Yes. You have answered yes. How many drinks would you like? Hey, you're already further than I ever got. Yeah, you can't be too fancy with these things. Two. Okay, you did it. I'm mildly impressed. I'm not mildly. What's less than mildly? I'm practically indifferent. How about that? That's, honestly, that's pretty rare, coming from this. But, uh, thanks. And, buddy, seriously, have a seat. You're making me twitch. Okay, you got me a drink from the talking laundry machine. That doesn't mean I want to feel your breath on my neck. 
Hey, the sea just looks warm, okay? It's also wet, by the way. Something I didn't realize until just now. Relax. I'm just messing with you. I'm waiting on the seed caravan. The 32 to Palace for the monthly shipment. Though, so, I don't know if you're aware, but that means you. My entertainment for the next 45 minutes. So, come here often? <laughs> no, I'm, I've actually never been here before. I'm a courier, uh, long hauling to the moon. A ship needed a charge. Mm. Mm, ship needed a charge. Uh, what do you like most about being a courier? Not that you have to like anything about anything, but, you know. Oh, honestly, just seeing the solar system. I actually just checked off the great dark spot. Neptune's about as far as I can get on six charge tanks. You're the first person I've met in a long time that still holds any interest in sightseeing the void. That's really it, though? Dodging asteroids and all that nothing? I just can't see the appeal. I just think space is fascinating. I really do. The phenomena you see, our history out here. Who gives a crap about our history out here? Space doesn't keep memories, doesn't keep anything. All space does is constantly remind you that everything you think matters doesn't. <sighs> oh. So, this is happening. What's happening? W what is that? Screamers. Anyone in charge? Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to the Mystic Ever. Would you? Any human in charge? No? Okay. I am looking for someone. His name is Edward Keller. Goes by Eddie. He looks like this. This is what he looks like. Look at it. You too. Have you seen him? Uh, sorry, no. My friend and I are headed to the satellites of Deimos. I haven't seen anyone with that, uh, complexion. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, that is what is going on with us. Yeah, been pulling a lot of all-nighters getting there. You know, we can hardly see straight as it is. I haven't seen him. I haven't heard the name. Eddie Keller? Nope. And now as I was just saying before you came in, I need to use the facilities. Which, I'm gonna go do now. Didn't you have to go too? Cause you better go now before we hit the road. Get your ship out front. You a courier? Uh, sometimes. Look, if you see him, you see Eddie, here's a copy of his photo. All signs on the back. Reward if you have any information. Any at all. Okay? Okay. Uh, sure. What about you? Name this kid? No. Where'd that woman run off to? Can I actually play pool? <laughs> what is it? Thank you, saw the kid. No, just just curious what the uh, what the actual reward is. A lot of money. Okay. Can't can't narrow that down. <laughs> any. All I know is that it's a lot. Sounds good, Chief. Sound good. Sounds good. I'm Sarah, nice to meet you. Uh, Beckett, but... And you're Beckett, yeah, okay. So that guy, he's a screamer. And that kid he's trying to find, that's my son, Eddie. So what's gonna happen is, we're gonna get out of here before he realizes who I am and kills us, or worse. And you're gonna give me a ride to ASAP 3. It's the next stop over, won't take a minute. Wait, I don't... This is all coming pretty fast, Sarah. Why am I helping you? I don't know who you are. You know me enough, and... Besides, you have to help me. He finds out we lied about what we're doing. He's gonna think we know more than we do. I didn't lie! You also didn't tell the truth when I lied. So, look, Beckett, we're in this together now, all right? And Eddie's my son, okay? My son. He's a good kid. You're not helping the bad guys here. But I do need your help with the ride. That's it. So, in or out. Because I'm out of here right now, no matter what. <sighs> okay, if I have to. Great. Open the window. Let's go. Hop to it. Beckett has agreed to help Sarah find her son, Eddie, who has gotten into trouble with the Yearward Clan, a family-run crime syndicate, but trouble has a way of finding those with good intentions. Oh, I really need to keep up with 
my morning stretches. Thanks for this. Really, I... I couldn't tell if you were gonna help me or not. I don't have much to offer for, like, payment or whatever, but we're gonna meet up with some people. I'm sure you'll be able to take something off them. Money or food, that's the, the least I can do. Sarah, come on. I don't need anything. You're in trouble. I was there. That's how it should work. Okay. Well, thanks again, Beckett. My ship's just down the path here. I parked it in front. All right. Yeah, let's go. Alright, I think that's gonna bring attention, but do you? Before. Yeah, sure, but I call mine, you know, I call it Cody. Like, that's his name. Hey there, I'm Cody. What's your name? Shall I guess? I'll start with the A. <laughs> oh, Why shoot. is this happening? Abigail, Alyssa, Aida. It's Sarah, Cody. Greetings, Sarah. Uh, no. Can we just leave now? Hey, open up or be opened up. Take your pick and pronto. I am detecting a rapidly heating ion torch. On my exterior. We should find a place to go. Bridge, now. Destination? Here, Texan, Michigan. Never heard of it. Sounds like a boot emporium. It's not a place. They're friends. We should be safe with them. We? He wants both of us. Right now, it's you plus me, sailor. Approaching. Damn it. Can you go faster? This is a Cody. It's optimized for long hauls, not drag racing. <laughs> up, up. Down, down. Streamer ship upon us. My magic teller's your son. I can't watch this. Blocking eyes. You're doing great. Look, we can keep dancing if you want, but I'll make horseshoes wear out before mine. He's right. A Cody isn't designed for, uh, you know, avoiding death spikes. Uh, okay. I have zero idea how to not die right now. I might. Redirecting. That's an asteroid field. I know. I got your ship's ID frequency. Don't think we're done, butterfly. He's diverting. It worked. Yeah, out of the frying pan and into the much larger and full of giant rocks that can kill us, frying pan. Well, yes, there is that. Oh, son of a gun. Thought I had that. That one looked just like a potato and nearly ended our lives. And you 
you're just a courier? Yeah. I know professional pilots who couldn't dream of flying through an asteroid field unscathed. I mean, I wouldn't really say unscathed. It's your character that you'd be willing to fly through that for free. You're either very generous or very insane. Truly, sailor. Truly. Or both. Or both. But, you know, hope in one hand, take a dump in another. See which fills up first. You kidding me? The more the merrier. Destination approaching. So who are we visiting again? Arkansas and Ted? M Michigan and Tex. They're sisters. We go way back. They're also, uh, bounty hunters. Good ones. Which means, you know, some might call them dangerous murderers. Depends on, uh, uh, your definition of murder. Cool with me. Okay. And with me. Nobody asked you. I control your oxygen. Oh, shoot. A reminder. Also, we have arrived. We should hurry, but but here's something you should know about Michigan and Tex. They're not gonna trust you. It's nothing personal. They're just not. Smart. They don't know me. I'm saying this because not only are they slow to trust, they're, you know, professional killers. Just wits. Keep them about you. Slow to trust doesn't mean impossible to trust. Just, yeah. Okay, you've been warned. Let's go. Um, are those... Actual human skeletons? Yeah. M and T hang on to the bodies of the real scumbags they take down. Like trophies, but don't feel bad for those bones. They belong to monsters. Pure dirt. Every one of them. And these are your friends? Yeah, yeah. Okay, knock on the door before I'm convinced one of these things moved. And hurry. We really shouldn't be out in the open for too long. Is that Sarah? Yeah. Beckon and Sarah fly Cody to Sarah's friend's home to ask him for help with searching for Eddie. That your driver? Yeah, that, that's Beckett. Look, so we need to get everyone on the phone pronto. And I mean everyone, yes, even him. So, uh... Hey! So, yeah, so just let's call everyone up and... Hey! What? When was the last time you peed? What? When was the last time you peed? Or changed your contacts? Or just, you know, breathed? I don't know. How about you go do all three? Not simultaneously, unless you know you wanna, and then we'll do the call and sort out the wash, okay? Okay, yeah. Bathroom's upstairs, second on the left. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, hi? That's a big coat you got on there. Big coat? You ever seen a coat that big? Never seen a coat that big. I mean, come on. I'm a big guy. Don't have too much say in the matter. It's just such a big coat, boss. Big coats can hide... What can they hide, Tex? All sorts of stuff, Michigan. Wallets, keys, knives, guns. So the question is, what's yours hiding? Hey, I hear tough talk. Behave down there, you two. Beckett's cool. He offered to give me a lift over here, so, you know, I owe him one. Yeah, fine. Okay. Still a big coat. Hall of Fame? Some of our latest and greatest. That is a lot. That's just this year. Who's your friend? You play guitar? Uh, nope. Yeah, me neither. Take it with you, poke at it for a while, see if you pick up a chord or two. Learn a new skill. Keeps your brain nice and electric, you know? Hey, thanks. Hey, you're welcome. Hey, I'm, I'm not done. My gift to you. I do have a big coat. More like yawn. We bust murderers twice weekly at least. You can take that if you wanna. Already logged the info in our ship. I'm getting all the posters. Whoa. 
Oh, was that Sarah? Oh my god, her glasses. Take it with you if you want. We got copies. The glory and horror of Sarah's adolescent glasses should never be forgotten. I mean, they're just giving me everything. How do you two know Sarah? We all grew up together. All dropped out of school together. So I'm going to keep this short, Paul Guy. You're helping out our friend. We like that, but we don't know you. And we don't like that. Something's got to be done about that. Post haste. Well then, get to know me. Yes, let's. So look, there's this uh, metric, I guess, that I used to gauge people. We're all garbage, right? Like everybody alive, uh, ever, right? Of course, right. I disagree. That's fair, but, you know, wrong. So, yeah, we're all garbage, but sometimes garbage has, like, you know, cares and crap like that, so it's not 100% completely garbage. So what would you say is your personal garbage percentage? Give me a number. God's honest. Come on. Uh, I don't know. 2%? Normally, I'd say you're full of it, and today is no different. <laughs> I'm not about to tell Sarah how to live her life. I've gazed into that abyss enough times, they don't even hand me a menu anymore. I'm just telling you, if she gets hurt, you get hurt worse. Better? Better. Wanna get everyone on the horn? You bet. Let's get some more free stuff. They need a group call button on this damn thing. Hang on. Uh, who exactly are we calling? The most dangerous hunter-killers in the universe. You know, our friends and colleagues. Where's Zeb? Not answering. Shocker. Oh well. Hey, guys. Who's the big guy? You. Big and tall. Identify. I'm helping out Sarah. And <laughs> so, heading on to your receipts. I've only allotted two and a half minutes to this call. I would suggest increasing speed. I appreciate the sacrifice. So, look. Edward is in trouble. Again. Correct, Phobos. Got it. Uh, got it in one there. Does that happen a lot? Eddie getting in trouble? A lot? No! Because that would mean there are times when he's not, and I honestly can't remember one. Eddie ripped off the screamers. Took their jump drive. You're yanking me! Ha! It's got stones. Never would have guessed, given where it comes from and all. Jump drive? Never heard of it. It's how the screamers stay on top of their sector. Everyone else has to use basic propulsion engines, but the screamers zip around at light speed. Hard to chase after the guy who robbed you when he's flying away at 300 million miles per second. They put a bounty on the jump drive's return. Big one. So, I'm asking for a favor. If you guys run across him, please, just please take the drive from him and call it a day. The bounty is just as good if you only return the jump drive. It doesn't need an accompanying corpse. We all owe each other something. Consider me square on anything owed to me if you help me out on this one. Deal? Agreeable. Swell. Yeah, I'm out in deep space and a hunt, so don't expect much from me, if anything. That doesn't surprise me. That surprise any of you? Hey, Goliath, when we want to hear something useless, we'll point. Fine, Wrench, don't uh, actively help, but drop a line if you see him. I'll think about thinking about it. Okay, that's it. Uh, thanks. Go away. Gladly. Unsolicited advice for you, sir. Jelly Green over there? He clearly ain't cut out for this kind of work. I drop him like rotten garbage. Toss him out. Remember when we all asked for your opinion? Yeah, neither do I. Just saying, Sam, you ain't exactly batting a thousand when it comes to business partners. I'd hate to see that average drop deeper. So, will you guys help out? Duh. Double duh. How about you, Becca? Still don't mind carting me around? I promise, I pick up after myself. Yeah, of course, I'm, you know, happy to help out. Probably too good to be true, but I'm going with it. <laughs> so, did they behave enough, at least? Or, like... Halfway to enough. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really? This soon and you're lying to me? Shame, shame, shame. So, we got two places we should probably go. There's Sinclair's Garage. It's a chop shop where Eddie used to take his bike to get worked on. Or, we can check out his apartment. M&T can check out wherever we don't go. What do you think? They're both in the same direction, more or less. About the same distance, too. Let's see the chop shop. Then bid adieu, and after you. Howdy do. Carrie's still out. Really? Oh, yeah. We're nowhere near done sorting the evidence. Hmm. 
I liked him enough. But most importantly, we didn't kill him. Yes. Yet. Plenty of time for that. More than plenty. Such generosity. The night is young, big coat. We're gonna head to Sinclair's. You guys swing by Eddie's place. Okay. 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 And keep us posted? Yep. 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 Come on, Becca. This feels good, Sarah. Like the old days. Yeah, we miss hunting with you. That was work. Then not having this conversation again, again, again. Come on, Becca. You used to be a bounty hunter? Not having this conversation with you either. We're leaving. So I had to go to Eddie's job while Tex and Michigan investigate his home. Beck and Sarah leave to go search for clues at the chop shop where Eddie's been fixing up ships. I feel like I'm just incriminating myself more and more with everything that I'm putting over here. Nope, Cody's still locked. Alright. To the bridge. Okay, so we told your friends we'd check out, uh... Sinclair's garage, where Eddie worked. But, I don't know. I'm thinking now, maybe we should go to his fireside instead. Oh yeah? Yeah, but maybe I'm just too fractious right now. We agreed on. Why change things up, you know? Yeah, sounds good. Next stop, Sinclair's Body Shop, aka the sink, also aka the toilet. <laughs> Do you have a kitchen or just something to make coffee? We have both, which we can happily show you on the tour. I don't need a tour. Sure you do. How else will you know where anything is? Once I know where the coffee machine is, I don't need to know anything else. It's been a long day, Cody. She's probably pretty tired. I'm not tired. I'm not tired. It's fine. I need to know where I'm sleeping anyway. So Beckett can lead while I navigate just as soon as the tour commences. When is the... And welcome to the <laughs> tour. I am Cody, Beckett's mechanically sentient mobile spacecraft. This, where you're standing, is the cockpit or coxswain station, where all the manual steering and comm links are handled. So if you'll just head stern side, or left, I guess, depending on how you're facing, we can continue the tour down into my bowels. This is what we like to call the pinboard room, but there's nothing really interesting to say about it. Yes, Cody finds it redundant, since sometimes I like to tack up things I've done here, or stuff I want to do. You know, places I want to check out, or whatever. Yes, which is odd, since I can and do retain all of that information. But let's continue downstairs, shall we? Package room. Job stuff. Side note. As our Apex, Beckett would ship up to and including two packages a week. Uh, impressive. Uh-huh. And to the right is the reactor and fueling charge station, controls to the cooling system, and also where we keep my brain. How often do you erase its memory? I don't. Erasing my recent learnings every 36 hours would effectively negate my personality. Yeah, that's the point. You're not supposed to have a personality. But whatever, guys. Uh, on a more important topic, I haven't spotted a coffee machine yet. Let's continue upstairs. So this area is Beckett's sleeping quarters. But you can have it for now. I, I can take the couch upstairs. Oh, I, uh, okay. Nothing of interest ever happens here. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, how interesting is a mammal's sleeping pattern anyway? Okay, hey now. Look, sometimes interesting things happen here. It's not all, you know, 
just, you know, just forget it. Why am I even arguing with you? Continuing upstairs, we have the kitchen. Coffee. And the lounge area. Don't get too excited. I won't. Landing and the water closet. Lounge. Reading note. And here's where the kitchen is for the foodstuffs. Further to the right, at the bow, is the lounge, where we watched the two movies Beckett's found. Oh, and connected to that is our bathroom. Our bathroom? His bathroom. Your bathroom. I don't need a bathroom. Uh-huh. Okay. And where is the coffee? I'll make you a cup. It's on the sink over here. So, what do you think? I noticed a coolant leak under the ballast stairs, but other than that, yep, you're a ship. Yes, that is true. It's more than just a ship, Sarah. Cody's been my home, my, my fireside for a while now. Oh, no. You're a sentimentalist. It's okay, though. I understand. It's a good scow, and I'm thankful to be here. Now, how about that coffee? If you please. Do you grow your own beans? No, there's a depot near Rigel I go to once a year. All they do is coffee and radishes. Uh-huh, the peanut butter jelly combo of beans. So you told Tex, Michigan, the rest of those guys that you were just helping to help. But there's really only a couple reasons to help someone like me. And you, Kimosabi, picked the least sensible one. So I hope Cody has the reins here, because I'm not going to be too cool with you steering into an asteroid field. Look, Sarah, you needed help, and my empathy instincts kicked in, all right? Yeah, you're just a nice guy, right? Look, I appreciate the lift and the help, Beckett, I do. But I'm on a ship, alone, with someone I don't know. So just keep that in your considerations. Cheers. So, we still have some time. to hurdle through space, you can water your plants, practice that newfangled guitar, run diagnostics on my personality fields. Ah, <sighs> okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Cody. Welcome as always. Alright, let's go down to the engine room. Nope. Wanna run my diagnostics? It'll help update my identity drives and keep us in sync with what behavior you deem appropriate or inappropriate, among other things. Uh, yeah, we got some time. Let's do it. Running diagnostics processor, self-analysis systems, updating to 67.8E, so... You agreed to help Sarah back at the bar despite not knowing who she was and potentially putting yourself in danger. Configuring empathy systems. You told Sarah and her friends you would aid their search out of a sense of selfless do-goodery. Adding expanded definition to commitment, comma, reasons for. Ah, huh, here's something. What, without having met the lad, do you think of Eddie currently? Uh, Eddie, I think he's up to something. I can't tell what, though. I mean, he has to have some sort of reason for all this that we're just not seeing yet. 
right? LFI now, configuring empathy systems. Alrighty, all done, Beckett. Thanks. This will help me adjust to whatever future situational or ethical disagreements that may arise. Oh, snap. Alright, number two. The bedroom. Uh, no, but I used to have one I barely touched. It got stolen a couple years ago. Tex and Michigan were in a, I guess, band is too, it makes them sound too confident. They played together before they started hunting, but there's a lot more coin in that, so. What do you uh, think of them, anyway? They, uh, I, I mean, I don't know them very well, but they, they seem like good friends. They can be. Practice a little more and we won't need the radio. Yeah, maybe I'll keep at it. All right, we'll stop by the lounge and then we'll head to the nook. Cody, can you tell Sarah I'm gonna watch a movie if she wants to join? Sarah, Beckett's putting on a movie if you wanna watch with him. What kind of movie? Uh, it's uh, it's mostly action, a uh, thriller. Mostly action, a thriller. Be right there. Wait, I thought he was the bad guy. He is the bad guy, but the other bad guys don't like him either. Oh. Didn't they show his oxygen levels were like at 4% or something? Uh, yeah, I think. He'd be chewing his fingers off from hypoxia psychosis if that were true. How do you know? I just know. Man, that's nuts. Who'd you see go crazy? <laughs> no one you know or ever would know. Can't hear over the commentary, guys. What'd that girl say? <sighs> I'll rewind. No! Wow, that blew. I, I mean, I, I thought the... I thought the girl was pretty good. Her accent came and went, but yeah, sure. Okay, well, thanks for that. Let me know when you want to watch another one. Not right now, but, you know, later. That should hold you over. This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. Gather your things, kiss your loved ones goodbye, because we are at our destination. Please proceed to the nearest exit at your earliest convenience. Here we are, Sinclair's Body Shop. Everybody hold hands, we have a buddy system here. You don't have to hold my hand. Yeah, I know. Enjoy your stay, and bring me back something, but only if you really want to. All right, let's see what they know about Eddie. or so ago. I asked all the usual questions. He threw me a bomb, said he found a job. I asked to come by, visit, get food, and he kept jousting me. Eventually, I gave up. I could see why he didn't want me to come. He would have been embarrassed. This place is so trashy. That couldn't have been the last time you guys talked. You don't call each other often? Uh, often enough. Just for my... Can you ballpark it? Every month? <laughs> two months? Not two months. Can you just... Turn it off while we're docked. It monitors our vitals. Fine, whatever. Pray the shop has water. I feel like I've been eating sand for a week. Nope. Oh. Alright. Beck and Sarah. Cody at Corley's. The mechanic who employs Eddie for odd jobs to help to find clues that could lead to his whereabouts. If you busted a thruster, you'll have to sleep it off here, because we close in an hour and don't work in the dark. We're just looking for someone who works here. Eddie? Another one? Okay. I'll tell you what I told his other friend, the skinny guy. Ed used to help in the garage, but quit two days ago. But you talked to somebody else looking for him? They tell you they were friends? He knew his first and last name, miss, so the two were at least on provincial terms. But that's all the news I have to report, so if you need a recharge or anything in the shop, just ask. 
It's coin or barter, though. No credit. Sure. Let's look around a little. Maybe he left something. Goddamn water. I'll take this, uh, water. Hey, come back if it gives you cholera. It shouldn't. It's clean ice, but... Is that disease-free water for me, big guy? Not that I'd ever assume, but... Of course it's for you. You said you were thirsty, and I am an excellent listener. Picking up a lot of random stuff. Oh, there, son. Down there's the garage, and not for public consumption. But we have plenty of wares you can peruse if you got the time of going. Would you mind if we checked it out? Just because any work there, you know? Uh, yeah, sure. Not that I think you'll find anything. But my niece Maya, she was his handler, gave him the job, worked with him, and she probably know more, or at least more than I do. Okay, thanks. He doesn't really need any of this. It's one of his. The mural? Eddie painted that? Yeah. And sorry, but I never told him to clean his room. Might have made the search here go a little quicker. Hey, Corley. We have any more of those glycol containers? Who's that? It's coming up the lift. We got like five of the 13 inchers, but not. Who are you? Does Corley know you're back here? Where is he? The shopkeeper, yeah. He let us through. We're trying to... Yeah, we're trying to find someone who worked here. Edward Keller. Goes by Eddie. Corley! We're out of the damn glycol containers, all right? Okay, go back to sleep. Yeah, we didn't bring your boss. We're not freebooters or scavengers. We just want a... Yeah, I got that part. I just need to know why. Friends of Eddie's? Family? Or maybe just loosely professional hunters of bounty? Which, you know, there are worse things to be. We're family of various relations. I'm his mother. Nice to meet you. Yeah, ditto. The thing of it is, though, that he never mentioned any family, and he certainly never mentioned you. So, what's really going on? This is... She's Sarah. She's his mom, really and truly. It's... You must see the resemblance. Guys. It's important. Please. Where's is Maya? Give me a second. You two are free to tail wag around to your heart's content, but remember, I know a lot about a lot. Yeah, okay. All right. Look fast. I want to get back on the road soon. Roger. Ah, oh, this had to have been Eddie's. He loved the stupid sport. Back when we found some old drives, him and his father and I, with centuries old games recorded on them. But he loved it. He really did. And he might as well have been the Coliseum to him. Wait, stop. That lift barely works. It could shorten take your knees. We'll jump before that happens. Fair? Why take the chance? It only goes to the pit. It's where we fix junkers. Yeah, but wasn't it Eddie's job to fix the crap you couldn't? I cleared out his tool chest when he quit, okay? So unless you want to see an empty... Yeah, I don't exactly trust your sense of cleanliness, so... All right, what if we don't touch anything? We won't touch anything and just look. Only take a minute. It'll take as long as it takes. Probably... Probably just a minute. Yeah, I'm still here. Just a second. Hey, big guy. You can go. But the pole cat stays here. Happy? Whatever, it's fine. Just look out for anything Mark Keller or... Sorry, I'm not your big sister. You know what to do. Okay. And big guy, remember what I said. Keep your hands inside the ride at all times. No problem. Having reached the top shop where Eddie sometimes worked, back at the Sands to the repair pit to find more useful information. Cody, can you translate this? Certainly. It's a letter from the Yearwoods. The Yearwoods? The 
the screamers, the, the ones... Yes, the parochial criminal syndicate that controls most of the Milky Way and who are currently after any for stealing their junk drive. It says here that, oh, it's a warning, against being late for their protection payments and to keep fixing up their ships? It couldn't be. Oh, oh, their ships for free. At least I'm 99% sure that's what it says. My Belarusian isn't great with the adverts. Wait, they're... Maya and Corley, they're, they're being forced to work with the Screamers? It seems like it. They repair and upgrade Screamer ships in exchange for some vague level of protection. Feels like a shakedown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, let's check out the ship real quick. Station near the belt, Davida. The one with all the security? Yeah, where I needed an ID just to go to the bathroom. Look at this. Eddie made a fake one. Oh, I do see. He has good penmanship. Yeah, but that's not the... Why would Eddie need to pretend to be a courier? Yeah, I don't know why he'd want to pretend to be someone like you either. Looks like one of the courier check-ins. It seems like someone got handy with the duct tape. Could you just get a little closer to it? I can access their computer from here and show you what I'm seeing. Oh, whoa. Yeah, this place is more wired than you after your fourth copy. Ha, huh. what am I looking for? Well, go ahead and scan that first console and press the button I'm displaying on your pad. Why did a ball of lightning just shoot out of this console? Did I do that? Keep up with it. I need you to scan the next console, too. Bingo. I think I'm really onto something. Yeah? Is that it? It looks like this is stage one of 128 total circuits, so buckle up, buddy. 128? Ah, the sweet, sweet sound of a joke soaring over my best friend's head. Oh, cool. This is... It's a door to an office? Seems like it. Good job. There must be something in there that's useful. Or, at least, something the chop shoppers don't want to be seen. It's a globe model, 88 model. They must use it for their mainframe. Shouldn't be hard to hack. Yes, give me just a moment. Here, they should really clean out their trash. A lot of pictures of the beast, and he talks about the Borlock Diner quite a bit, meeting someone there. It all seems very hush hush. Okay. Wait, there's also. I don't know what this is, but it's a recording. Crap, I guess I missed you, Maya. That's Eddie? Yeah, I wanted to say I'm sorry I blew up at you this morning. I just really hate doing those runs for the Yearwoods, and it, it feels like I'm delivering packages more and more. You've kind of been the only person I've ever looked up to, so I just don't want things to be weird between us. Uh, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Intriguing. Or boring. I don't really know. Was it intriguing? I didn't know him and Maya were so close. I wonder if Sarah knew. The lift is coming down. We should leave before we're discovered. Or, you should leave. I'll be okay. called his pet outside to look at some converters, so I took the opportunity. Found anything? Well... Because I've been, been pelting her with questions, and she's been really cagey, especially about the yearwoods. And then I found a work order for some pretty advanced tech. Circuit boards only screamers would need, or afford. Yeah, we found a... There's a mainframe back there, an old 88 Globe. The yearwoods have been forcing the shop. Corley and Maya, they help them out with their ships. I don't know for how long or how much Eddie's involved. Okay, well... Sometimes first impressions check out, you know? <sighs> Look, I know you get what you can get, and times aren't what they are, but I just... I never thought Eddie would trip up so much as to run chores for some boost monkey like Maya. She's just so up her own hoo-ha about everything. Actually, he kind of... On the machine, there was a message, and Eddie... He kind of... I think she was someone he kind of respected. Yes, I think the words were, the only person I've ever looked up to. Yeah, but that's... <laughs> 
That part's not the only person. He said that a teenager's brain recycles itself every 20 damn minutes. He doesn't know what he likes, what's important to him, or whatever. Fine. You said there's a mainframe? Let's just wipe it and go. You mean erase the files? We don't know where to go next. The Borlaug Diner. I saw a bunch of receipts. Him and somebody else have been meeting there for the months. Yes, we, um, saw a similar... So we got what we wanted. All that's left is to slow down their helping the Yearwoods any way we can. And that obviously includes destroying their memory files. Yeah, that, uh, I, I guess that makes sense. Of course it makes sense. So stick your flying can opener on it and let's bum it out fast. Well, there it is. God, we'll be doing it a favor. The thing's on its last coil. Yep, it won't take long to fry the archive and permanently destroy this establishment's means of economic survival. Whenever you're ready, up to you. Let's do it. Dead? Yeah, dead. Great. Let's get the hell out of this garbage pile before I catch something. Following Eddie's trail based on the discover receipt, Beck and Sarah journey to an unknown diner called Borlaug. Oh, hey, before you go, I actually found something. I think it was Eddie that left it. Here, it's a key card. Looks for a station to access the restricted area. My eyes aren't the best anymore, but... Hey, thanks. We, uh, appreciate it. Anytime. What? Cody, what's wrong? Oh! You were just about to leave that place of business with unpurchased goods. Oh no, what were we thinking? How foolish could we have been? Oh wow, uh, thanks bud, good catch. Er, are you just gonna put them all back? Maybe. Can we just get the hell out of here? The glue might come in handy. Okay, my advice for that, double bond with tape for security's sake. <laughs> Guess I don't need to pay for the postcard. be scared of the Yearwoods. They're ships, streamers. We'd hear him scorching the atoms over some distant moon, and he'd run into my room, jump under the blanket, cover his ears. If I told that kid he'd be working for the noise monster someday, I, uh, I don't know what he'd think. I really don't. Uh, why does it matter what that little kid would think? He didn't understand what those sounds meant. It's the noise of a, a broken economy. Not anything scary. Not anything scary? <laughs> Beckett, maybe you need a little more of that kid's instincts. Don't mean to interrupt, but there appears to be... Don't, Don't worry, worry, Cody. It's just my friends. Hey, look. You can push the throttle a little more. You know you're in the passing lane, right? You seem happy. You don't. What'd you find out? Anything interesting? Because we got a leader three, we think. Uh, well, we found a receipt and paper postings about some restaurant called the Borlaug Diner. Yeah, so did we. It's a popular watering hole for the ill consider. You guys find anything else? Just met his boss. Our boss is lacking, I guess. This 
shit through. Total garage monkey. Uh, she didn't have anything for us. I could tell she thought her and Eddie were closer than they actually were. Didn't look like she'd seen the sun in a month. <sighs> Sarah, come on. Aren't you being a little jealous here? She wasn't trying to replace you, or...? It's not me that was acting jealous. If anything, it was her. Oh, and we, uh, we found what we think is a strand of Eddie's hair in the sink. We'll report back when we have something to report. Tell me the truth, Beckett. You're the only one in here. You think... What's her name? Maya? You think... She's been a better mother to Eddie than me. What? No, no, not at all. I I have no idea what your relationship was like. Or what his was like with, with hers. It's just it's easy, I guess, to look back and think about the choices you've made and what you might have done differently now that you know the things you know. <sighs> I think I'm gonna make some coffee, clean out the uh, cobwebs. I spy is always good for mental exercise. Beckett and I used to play at least every other week. I'm, uh, not much into road trip games, but swing by the kitchen when we're almost there, or, you know, for whatever. I'm still up for ice spy, if you want to partake. Promise I won't pick any love nuts this time. I'm down for some I spy. Let's get it. Let's go down to the engine room. In this room? So it's not in this room for this I spy. Is that a show? You are steadily improving, I think. Uh, practice makes. Well, not perfect, but at least bearable. Let's not go to the kitchen because I believe that's where it ends. So let's go back to the basement. But the thing is that he's an entire spaceship, so he can see everything in the ship. So for a game of I Spy, that was gonna be like something here.
but none of them are wearing what I would call a show. Alright, let's just go up to the kitchen. Maybe she's wearing one. Oh, she has one. Oh, hey. didn't, uh, didn't see that. Getting something to eat? Oh, is it... Are, are you talking about Sarah's cape? Yes, you got it! Beg, Beg please tell me you're not playing that stupid game this time. It passes the time. I guess I said actually what she was looking at, but... Let me ask. The glue was I spy with my little eye darkness. It's just Sarah, Cody. She's put a blanket over your monitor. Restricting my ability to see is dangerous, Sarah. What if there was an emergency? An I spy emergency. Oh, what's next? A 21 questions crisis? Someone loses count, gives 22 guesses? No, an actual emergency. You don't need to see what I'm doing in the kitchen, Cody. You just want to. Come on, Cody. Let's give her a little privacy. I'll take off the blanket, but don't watch her without permission again, okay? Thank you. Okay, I apologize for the spatial intrusion. Let's salt the earth with another road trip game, okay? You mean clear the air, don't you? Yes, what I say. What game, Cody? Never have I ever. Never have I ever played a game as childish as never have I ever. There, do I win? No! Do we want to? Well, I definitely win at something. Sarah, throw Cody a bone here. Let's play a couple rounds. I got some old whiskey to make it a game. I would really, really... I really prefer not. Wait, you really never had to change your thruster? No, I've gotten lucky. And Cody's good with letting me know when it's time to do some upkeep. That I am. Wow, well, that was fascinating, gents, but I'm... Wait, 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 it's my turn. It's my turn. Never have I ever robbed someone at gunpoint. Huh? Eh? Um, of course not, Cody. I called it. I so called it. What's the, uh, what, what's the story there, if you want to share it? It was a long time ago when I was feeling desperate and hopeless. I think it's your turn, Beckett. Oh, okay. Uh, never have I ever... Uh, needed stitches? Fun game, gents. I'll be in my bunk if you want to play horseshoes next. I didn't know she robbed a guy, all right? Just let's quit the game for a while, okay, Cody? Ah, oh, crap. Cody, what the hell was that? I'm not... Cody! Freebooters! Tech scavengers! Cannibal rats scourge of the cosmos! Yeah, we got it! There's two of them! Aces class scorpions. We'll need to outrun them or their ballistics will shred the hull. Which is now impossible as they just blew up my reactor's external control rods. Uh, okay. How do we fix it? Beckett, run downstairs to the edge and purge the reactor manually. We don't have much time. My autopilot's down. I'm sailing blind out here. Just go, Beckett. I can pilot it for the two seconds you're gone. Uh, really? Yes. All right, but just... Just be careful. Just get in the engine room and fix Cody before we all get annihilated for spare parts. See the blinking light on the reactor? Yes. Hit it to reset the engine so we can get the heck out of here. The latest impact short circuited my automatic doorway processes. You're trapped in here, as it were. Well, you seem awfully calm about it. It's also fried my ability to express concern through vocal modulation. But please don't confuse my tone with content. I'm quite certain we're about to die. Oh, got it. The exit is quickly overheating. Manually turn the cooling valve so I can open it, please. I'm coming up to an asteroid field. I think I can lose the booter, but I need captain's approval here, man. In or out, don't think, just answer. In, in, in. On it. I think Sarah requires your assistance, and rather immediately. 
I'm coming, Cody. I'm going as fast as I can here. Proceed onwards, Beckett. You're unfortunately still blockaded from the cockpit, Beckett. But try jimmying the door open. Uh, Beckett, one's trying to get ahead. Should I slow down or try to ram him? Give me the go-ahead here. Ram him! Got it. At your earliest convenience, please find a way to open that door, Beckett, so Sarah doesn't get us all blown into the nearest star's gravitational pull. I can hear you! It's... Jeremy, it's stuck! I believe you need to find something in the room to try and open. In the engine room? Looks like there has to be something in the kitchen. No. Somebody had to steer back it, and that somebody had to be me right there. Just here, take over. Cody keeps fighting me, though it claims it's natural drift. It is. Mostly. Just get us out of here, Beckett. So I guess we all die. Your other 
Oh. No, 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 we can't waste any time, Cody. Can't, can't you make it to a station or fuel depot? Negative. We're leaking vitals. I need to crash land. Race for impact! Crash traveling to Barlow Diner to continue their search for Eddie. Beck and Sarah have been attacked by freebooters, scavengers who risk their lives to steal ships and tech. Beck, you okay? How's your leg? Feel any heat on your side? <coughs> hey, right as rain. You survive? Yeah, for the most part. We. <laughs> Dropped anchor a little too fast on the landing there, guys. A few parts got damaged in the descent. Just bottom line it. Are we stuck? No. Heavens no. Just so long as you can procure a coolant coil and a 35 inch dimmer for the thrusters. Okay. And yeah, I'm also gonna need a a bit of hose or pipe for the left propellant tank there too. And I think yeah, yeah I think that's it. Sure. Yeah. Cody, I don't know where we even are right now. How are, how will we ever find all that stuff you just mentioned? My environment scan pinged a couple candidates for replacing parts. A jog around the landscape shouldn't take more than a few hours. We don't have hours. Admittedly, our grocery list could be a lot easier to manage if the driver who got us here had better training. Fingers, but... Whoa, hold on. Are you trying to blame me for this? Because I was flying according to Beckett's instructions, Cody. And you're... you're an AI ship. Okay, Cody, come on. Don't be mean. It wasn't anybody's fault. We got separated and... You know, stuff happens. Sarah did the best she could with what she had. You won't see me arguing she wasn't performing to the best of her capabilities. <laughs> All right. Listen. So, remember? A coil for the coolant system. A piece of poser piping for the propellant tanks, and a dimmer, preferably 35 inches for my thrusters. Got it. 